All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Next on the Power. So I've got a couple interesting stories for you guys today. The first story is kind of a follow-up story to the transgender ban in powerlifting, where recently um, a man who identified as a female was banned from competing in the female division. And that person was named J.C. Cooper, and they were banned from the USAPL powerlifting organization. Now, now this recent story is kind of a fascinating one, um, pretty interesting, actually. Um, there's a rapper in Britain that goes by Zuby that has about 32,000 followers on Twitter. Uh, but recently he posted a video that has gone tremendously viral and is being shared by multiple news platforms. A male British rapper has broken a women's weightlifting record while identifying as a female to highlight what he calls the absurdity of claims there's no biological strength difference between men and women. Um, with 1.22 million views, 12,000 retweets, and 41,000 likes. So what was this video and why did it go viral? So the video is of him deadlifting 230 kilograms, which equates to about 507 pounds. Now, the reason this is going viral isn't so much the deadlift as it was the caption. Um, so the caption of this says, I keep hearing about how biological men don't have any physical strength advantage over women in 2019. Likely he is referring here to all the transgender arguments about should transgender people be allowed to compete in powerlifting. So then he goes on to say, so watch me destroy the British women's deadlift record without even trying. P.S. I identified as a woman whilst lifting this weight. Don't be a bigot. So there's a couple things I wanted to touch on with this story. A lot of the news outlets that are sharing this are kind of putting a really politicized spin on this, just like they did with the first story about J.C. Cooper. Now, the way that a lot of news organizations that aren't familiar with powerlifting are wording this, they're wording it like he actually went to a powerlifting competition as a man, competed in the women's division, and actually beat the women's deadlift record by identifying as a woman during that competition and then going back to being a man afterwards. That is not the case at all. Now, if that were actually what he had done, that would have been a super fascinating story if some organization had actually let him compete as a woman um, when he's clearly a man, clearly identifies as a man, just on the merit that he says, I'm identifying for a woman during this competition. Now, that would be a super interesting story. And that's actually what I thought happened based on the way that these news outlets are reporting this story because they're trying to really make this political and really make this a viral story when in fact, it's not really what happened at all. It's just a guy basically posting a video of himself deadlifting in the gym and trying to make a political point with the caption that he put on that video. And mainstream media just happened to pick it up and give it a lot of traction. Um, now, I do think his point actually landed fairly well. I mean, I think he got across what he was trying to say here because the main argument against banning transgender athletes from competing in powerlifting is that a male would have no biological advantage over a female if they're switching over to female um, and they're taking hormones or whatever to do that taking estrogen and they're making the transition to female the argument in favor of them being allowed to compete is that being born a male does not offer any genetic advantage or any biological advantage in terms of strength in terms of being able to lift weights and simply scientifically that is unequivocally false being born a male and specifically going through puberty as a male is going to permanently change your bone density, your skeletal structure, your muscle mass. Um, then especially if you take into consideration a man that identifies as a woman that has not undergone the transition process of taking hormones, exogenous hormones to lower their testosterone or eliminate their testosterone then that individual would also have a hormone advantage over the women that they're competing against. So I do actually take his point on this story, um, but I think the way that the media has spun this is actually kind of ridiculous. Like he actually, um, in an official competition, identified as a woman and smashed these records. Simply not what happened, but I guess that's why you guys have NSP to set these kind of things straight. Now, the next story that I have for you guys today is Rolly Winkler working on his midsection. Now, Rolly Winkler actually might really be one of my favorite bodybuilders of the modern era because he he's one of these guys um, that he's taken the criticism that he's gotten and he's taken it in stride. And he's actually listened to what people have said to him, the feedback that he got, 
you know, several years ago about his midsection being blown out. He even got feedback from Arnold Schwarzenegger himself um, about having kind of a bloated, distended midsection. But the thing that I like about Roly is he doesn't dismiss that criticism. He takes that criticism and he starts to work on what people are telling him is the problem. So that's one of my favorite things about him as a bodybuilder is he's not only able to handle criticism, um, but he actually listens to it and does something about it. So Rolly Winkler posted this video on his Instagram with the caption, working on the midsection, where he's doing kind of a variation of a planking exercise. It's kind of hard to tell with his shirt on if he's doing a vacuum pose while he's doing that plank. Um, but oftentimes people will do that um, kind of laying in that position and trying to uh, vacuum pose as a way of working on controlling the midsection and tightening the midsection. So honestly, really, my hat is off to Rolly Winkler. I really respect a guy like him that can really take criticism like that and then work on what the fans are telling him they don't like. Even though, actually, I don't think at the Arnold Classic 2019, I wouldn't even really say he had a gut problem at the Arnold Classic. He had that cramp that everybody was talking about. But other than that weird cramp that he had, I wouldn't really even say he had a gut at the Arnold. I think the main problem with Rolly at the Arnold Classic was simply the fact that he was not in condition. Now, not being in condition doesn't always necessarily mean you're going to have a gut while not being conditioned. It might just mean your conditioning is bad. And to be honest with you guys, while there were some points where I noticed that Rolly was breathing kind of heavily during his posing routine and that was kind of coming through in the midsection, there weren't really any points throughout the night where I thought to myself, man, Rolly is really letting his gut spill out here. I think his, his midsection actually still looked pretty good especially compared to some of the worst case scenarios with his midsection that we've seen in the past, I don't think it was really so much an issue here. So the fact that he's still taking time out of his day to work on this and address this problem and post about the fact that he's addressing this problem, I think is really commendable and really respectable. And Rolly's one of these guys, I mean, I think he's tried probably every trick in the book um, to reduce the size of that midsection. Um, we've seen photos and videos of, of him wearing like a waist trainer, you know, one of those neoprene belts around his waist, like 24 seven tightened to the max, um, trying to reduce the size of the waist. So again, I really do think that's commendable, and we will be seeing Rolly Winkler compete in about a week from today, actually, um, at the Arnold Classic Australia. So he is going to be having the opportunity to redeem himself in Australia. So I'm really hoping for the best uh, for Rolly Winkler, maybe the opportunity for him to move up several placings between the Arnold Classic and the Arnold Classic Australia. Again, at two weeks out from the Arnold, Ohio, when Rolly did that guest posing, I think it looked kind of like he was four weeks out, five weeks out, when he was two weeks out. So really, I think another two to three weeks between the Arnold Ohio and the Arnold uh, Australia could be enough time for him to really nail it and really peak for that show. So we could see a completely different Rolly Winkler in Australia. And just in case you guys have forgotten about the Arnold Classic Australia lineup, I'm going to go ahead and show that to you guys right here. So from the Arnold Classic Ohio, you will be having William Bonac, Brandon Curry, Steve Kuklo, Josh Lenardowitz, Rolly Winkler, Luke Sando, Akeem Williams. Um, so many of the guys, actually, that's almost the entire uh, top six, I believe. I think the only guy missing out of there is Cedric. So the Arnold Australia is going to be really interesting. It's basically going to be a Arnold Ohio rematch. So I can't wait to see that. Um, and then just two weeks after the Arnold Australia is the Indy Pro. Now, hopefully we see most of these guys also do the Indy Pro as well. Because since the Indy Pro is so close to me, I'll be there doing uh, press stuff. So I kind of look forward to seeing who all shows up for the Indy. I mean, if they're doing the Arnold Australia and they're willing to take the 15-hour flight to Australia, just hold on to that conditioning for two more weeks, come over to Indy, um, and try to win that you know $10,000 first place prize. Now, the final story that I have for you guys today is just a quick update here on Arnold Schwarzenegger's son, Joseph Bania. Um, posted this photo on Instagram, training arms where he looks to actually be making some significant improvement to the size of his arms. I said that in a past video, that the one thing that I would like to see, um, because Arnold was so famous, obviously, for having these crazy big biceps, would be for his son, Joseph, to try to match that. Obviously, that's a pretty tall task to match the biceps of Arnold Schwarzenegger, but being his son, I think if anybody can do it, it's probably him. Like I've said in previous videos, I think you can definitely see the similarities um, from the terms of the genetics of the chest. Um, and like I said in that previous video as well, I think the main thing that a lot of people are still waiting to see is if his son can match the famous peaks that Arnold had. So that's the main thing that I want to see um, when his son finally does compete in classic physique. I want to see that crazy you know, front double bicep with a vacuum pose in the classic physique division. 
um, you know, the next generation of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now, of course, a lot of people are going to say, well, let him do his own thing. He doesn't need to be a carbon copy of his dad. It's kind of stupid to try to replicate, you know, what your dad did. But I mean, come on, he's Arnold's son. You guys got to admit, you guys want to see, you know, basically like the second coming of Arnold. He can have his own characteristics, you know, that make him unique to his physique. But you know, you guys want to see a Arnold Schwarzenegger front double bicep again. And who is more fit for the job than Arnold's own son? So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about the three stories that we discussed today. Um, you know, both the uh, powerlifter that identified as a female to break the female record um, in the UK for the deadlift, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger's son physique, and also how you think Rolly is going to do at the 2019 Arnold Classic Australia. Thank you guys for watching the video and please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.